got two free lawnmowers, and I'm going to see if we're going to be able to start them up. All right, so here they are. Here's the first one. As you can see, it's a Craftsman 6.0 horsepower. And here's the second one. This one's a 6.25 horsepower Craftsman. All right, my first impressions of these lawnmowers is that this one's a little bit older than this one, and uh, the green one is also in a little bit better shape than the red one. All right, let's start with fixing the red one because I believe that it is in worse shape than the green one. So, the first thing that we can tell right off the bat is that the previous owner taped up, duct taped up, the side of the uh, mower deck because it rusted through. So that tells me he didn't take very good care of it and didn't store it very well. Also, there's a bunch of grass mussed up here. And then the next thing we notice is the lack of an air filter, which tells me that the carburetor is also probably a little messed up and that uh, hopefully nothing bad got into the carburetor engine with the lack of the air filter. But uh, it's gone, so I'll replace that. And the next thing we notice is the lack of a pull start. So the way this man has started it is using a drill start to turn this bolt, uh, which concerns me a little bit just because the bolt holds on the flywheel and it holds on the key that makes sure the timing stays uh, constant. But I think that if we use this, nothing really bad will happen because you need to twist it the other way to undo it, not this way, which is the way I'll be twisting it to start. All right, first glance is at this green uh, Craftsman mower. First thing I noticed that concerns me is the fuel filler cap, which has a hole burnt into it. And the reason that concerns me is that it was sitting outside with a free sign on it for the past uh, couple of days and it rained a few times so I hope no rain got into the uh, fuel tank and into the engine because that would be a pain to disassemble and clean all the pistons, uh, not all the pistons, the piston. Other than that, this lawnmower looks in pretty great shape. Um, really surprised that it was free, maybe they just wanted an upgrade. Uh, the reason that it was for free, as the sign said, was the pull cord doesn't work properly. So we'll fix that. So every time we get a new lawnmower in the shop, the first thing that I do is test compression. And the way you test compression is if you have a pull cord, you pull it, and if you struggle when the piston gets to top dead center, that means it has good compression. You want to struggle uh, a bit, but not too much, so just a little bit of a struggle. Now this one doesn't have a pull cord, but I think I know well enough the how the uh, pistons should feel, so I'll just see if I can feel it by hand. <laughs> All right, that feels pretty good. And we do it one more time. Ah. All right, that's pretty good compression. And if you have a compression uh, meter or a compression measurer, then uh, a good amount of compression is between 60 and 120 psi for these Craftsman mowers. So I just tested the pull cord, and it did not go well. I basically ruined it even more. I guess I didn't believe the sign, but it, it was correct because obviously the pull cord doesn't work very well. So before we can even test compression, I'm going to have to fix the pull cord. So here's the pull cord, as you can see, like this. Uh, the issue we're having with it is if we take this off, as you can see, it's missing its white stopper on this side. And so that means sometimes it doesn't grab the gear properly which is what it's supposed to do, it grabs it and turns it and sometimes it doesn't let it recoil properly which is supposed to happen like this and just lets it recoil around uh, and then when it goes the other way it grabs it like that see how it does that uh, so all I need to do is replace this white stopper here and the pull cord should be good as new alright now that I fixed the pull cord we can test compression so again we have to struggle if when the cylinder gets to top dead center so here we go this lawnmower actually has a little bit less compression than the red one, but I still think it's enough to run. Alright, the next thing we do when we get a new lawnmower in the shop is always check the underside of it. So, under here we're checking to see if the blade looks good, if there's a lot of debris underneath, 
and if there's any dents or dings in the blade, because that could mean uh, messed up timing. So as we can see, uh, there's not very much debris under here, so that's a good thing. And the blade also looks fairly good. It actually looks fairly new, so I would say that this was replaced recently, because there's not very much rust, and there's n barely any dings on this thing. And it turns very easily. Wow. That's very nice. So this is actually a very good underside compared to how the top looked. And it, since it moves so freely, that means there's very little rust on the connector from the blade too. So this is all a good sign. Okay, next let's check the underside of this green lawnmower. Okay, wow. I'm not sure you guys can see this. But let me just zoom in a little bit for you, because that's surprising. Look at how much debris there is under here. I can't even see the... I have to dig to see the bottom. And when I see the bottom, I'm not happy because it's very rusty. So this is an incredible amount of debris. This needs a lot of cleaning. All right, so I'll clean this. But next, let's take a look at the blade. Now, the blade... Oh, wow. Yeah, this is very difficult to spin, too, meaning that it's a rusty connector. So that's going to pose even more challenges. Okay, so the blade, again, looks pretty good. I would say that this is a new blade also, or not new, but replaced, although it is whacking against some of the debris. But, yep, a rusty connector. So this is turning around. This lawnmower actually turns out to be in a little bit of a worse shape than the red lawnmower. That's unfortunate. All right, and now we're gonna check the oil. And it doesn't say whether to tighten the cap to check the oil or not, but I'm gonna assume you check, tighten the cap. All right, so this has uh, the perfect amount of oil. It is a little bit brown or black almost but I'm gonna leave it in because I don't wanna waste oil on this mower. All right, let's check the oil on this one. Okay, this doesn't have any oil in it, surprisingly, so I'm going to have to add some. Either it doesn't have any, or it doesn't have enough to even get on the dipstick. Let's check one more time. Yeah. I'm going to have to fill that with oil. All right, and this is the oil I'm going to be using. It's SAE 5W30, and it's just conventional oil. So I'll go ahead and put it in. All right, this is the last step before I start this mower. What I'm gonna do is take off the air filter. Let's just check it to see how it looks. This actually looks uh, good for this lawnmower. Uh, doesn't even need a cleaning really, so. Next thing we're gonna do is spray some starter fluid just right in here. This is actually, I'm using ether as starter fluid. Uh, it works, works fine. So it's basically the same thing actually. All right, just gonna spray a little bit. You don't wanna, uh, I've seen some videos where they spray it right in the hole, but you don't wanna exactly do that because that's not the best thing for these motors. So let's just put the air filter back on and see if she starts up. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Actually, I haven't even primed her yet. Running good. 
All right, so I got a spare air filter from our parts collection. We're gonna go ahead and see if this one starts up. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with this one. That's a little much. I, I wish I did a little less now that I did that, but we'll see. All right, and let me grab one more thing actually. So what I grabbed was this, which covers the top here to make it look a little, a little nicer, cover up some of the linkages. All right guys, so I put the stuff back on. Let me show you what you need to do to start her up. So over on this side, if we zoom in here to the safety, this is the part where usually you pull the back of it down and it moves this forward so that the lawnmower stays on and then when you lift up the thing, it stays off. But what you need to do is tape this forward, like so, just to keep, uh, to keep it forward and keep the mower on. And when you want to turn it off, I just have to take the tape off and pull it backward. All right, moment of truth for this mower. To start this one, you need a 15 16 drill bit. Just turn it like that. Let me primer a few times. Actually, does it even have gas in it? Yes, it does. It does have gas. Here we go. Alright, I shut her down really quickly because she's idling a bit low, so I'm going to show you guys how to fix that now. And if you can see, let me zoom in for you, right here, this little thing adjusts the idle speed, so we pull it back for faster and push it forward for slower. Let me start it up and we can see which speed seems best. All right, we'll start it back up. owners had given them up because they couldn't uh, get them running again. So I hope I showed you guys a couple of neat fixes, a couple of ways to do things, uh, maybe a checklist to go through if you ever get a new lawnmower. It's a plus for me because I now have two more lawnmowers to mow people's lawn with. Uh, and really I can't believe they were free because they were frankly easy fixes. So I guess thanks for watching.